Come on in guys, welcome to Idled Out where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke and today we're talking about five times Survivor players through tribal immunity challenges to disastrous results. Okay, so throwing a challenge is generally ill-advised, as we're about to see. Not only do you have to get nearly everyone on your tribe on the same page, you've also got to ensure that your target doesn't have any idols or the social capital to flip the vote back to you. You really don't want to be the tribe or the guy who champions throwing a challenge, only to somehow get voted out yourself. Leaving yourself vulnerable to criticism from armchair quarterbacks like me, sometimes decades later. While there have been a few challenge throws that have been confirmed or heavily hinted at after the fact, I'll be keeping this strictly to challenge throws that were actually confirmed on TV. And I'll be ranking by general infamy within the survivor community, as well as how humiliating they are for the challenge throwing tribes or individuals. All that said, let's dig into five times survivor players threw challenges, only for it to blow up in their faces. At number 5 is Rodney throwing the episode 6 immunity challenge in Survivor Worlds Apart, only for it to result in his bromance Joaquin's elimination. At post-swap Escameca, Rodney is having a seriously tough time finding someone who shares his values. You know, values? Like the set of moral standards by which one lives? Now, contrary to popular opinion, Rodney does actually have those, and he thinks he and Joaquin are philosophically very similar. They're both into late nights, clean clothes, hot babes… you get the picture. They even bond over their confusion and utter disbelief that Mike is intentionally celibate. An incel, if you will. That is what that means, right? Anyway, Rodney wants to throw the upcoming immunity challenge to take out Joe, justifiably viewing him as a massive post-merge challenge threat that should probably go sooner rather than later, and the rest of his post-swap blue-collar tribe mates agree. Mike is particularly motivated to throw the challenge because this swap sent his closest ally Kelly to the other tribe, and he worries that she's in danger. The tribe collectively sandbags the memory challenge, and afterwards everyone's down to just vote out Joe. But somewhere along the way, the tables turn against Rodney and Joaquin. Everyone's noticing these two are getting a little too bromantic and aren't even hiding it. So Mike, Dan, and Sierra join forces with Joe to blindside Joaquin out of the game, in an effort to keep Rodney close to the chest, which isn't hard to do. While this challenge throw ended up working out great for Mike, Rodney's insistence that they lose on purpose to vote out Joe blew up in his face instantly, sending his newest, closest ally out of the game before they could even get a cute celebrity couple mashup name, which we all agree would have been Wachney, right? Rod Keen just sounds like some grain that costs $14.99 a pound at Whole Foods. At number 4 is Suk Jai throwing the episode 3 immunity challenge in Survivor Thailand to eliminate Jed for some reason, only for that to backfire later on. This is perhaps the most baffling challenge throw in Survivor history, as we never really get a justified explanation as to why exactly mild-mannered dental student Jed was so disliked by his tribe that it was worth throwing a challenge to take him out. Granted, Jed, Stephanie, and Rob were clearly outside of the majority alliance on Suk Jai, mostly of their own making. They didn't really participate in early bonding activities like building the shelter, sharing meals, or even sleeping in the shelter. This doesn't go unnoticed by everyone else, who all find this behavior kind of weird. Jed's also perceived as lazy, an image that isn't helped when he loses the tribe's fishing net during an afternoon cat nap. Although this is, I think, the last straw for Suk Jai, I'm not sure punishing Jed is worth giving up their challenge momentum. Actually, because we're relitigating this 20 years later, I'm certain it's not worth giving up their challenge momentum. At the immunity challenge, the members of Suk Jai barely even try to compete, and just kind of spend the whole thing standing around, pointing at things, and then just boot Jed in the name of tribal unity. Yeah, this guy was really tearing this tribe apart. It's impossible to say what happens if they don't throw this challenge, but at the very least, they enter the fake bamboozle merge up 6-4 against Chewy Gone. Even if they did lose both immunity challenges after that, they'd still enter the real merge at final 8, 
with a solid four. And I'd argue that with Jed still around, they'd pick up at least one other immunity win somewhere down the line. I'm sorry, but I really just can't get over how bizarre it is that they threw a challenge to oust Jed. It's just strange to look back on this season and see a tribe that thinks tribal unity can only be achieved by getting rid of this guy, one of the chillest, most inoffensive human beings ever cast on this show. This franchise really didn't know what kind of crazies were coming, did it? At number 3 is Burton's emphatic insistence on throwing the episode 4 immunity challenge in Survivor Pearl Islands to eliminate Krista, only for him to get blindsided instead. By episode 4 of Pearl Islands, Drake is one of the most dominant tribes in Survivor history. An unfortunate side effect of constantly winning on Survivor is Big Move-itis, and Burton's come down with this affliction. He's antsy that the quote-unquote weaker players, namely Sandra, Fairplay, Krista, and Trish, will team up to eliminate the quote-unquote stronger players later on. That would be himself and Rupert. So Burton pitches a plan to lose the next immunity challenge to Rupert in what may be, and I'm not being hyperbolic here, one of the biggest misreads of another player ever in Survivor history. It should be plainly apparent to anyone who spent any time at all with Rupert that he is loyal to a fault and 1 million percent Drake strong. Rupert's also closely aligned with Krista, and he doesn't even like Burton. Remember just hours ago, Burton, when you made fun of Rupert for wearing a skirt? Rupert also clearly identifies with the weaklings and weirdos and considers himself one of them, rather than a jock like Burton and Sean. So, uh, yeah, a pretty wild misread all around. Rupert nods along to Burton's face, but privately, he admits he'd now like to kill Burton. As soon as he said that, I wanted to smack him and say, you know, traitor. If this was a pirate culture, he'd already be dead. I love how Rupert's using the pirate imagery here. One thing you've got to respect about Rupert, he will lean into whatever the theme of his season is super hard. If Rupert were on Survivor Ghost Island, he'd probably wear like a bed sheet with holes cut out over his head. Rupert immediately tells his alliance about Burton's challenge throwing plan, and they decide they'd love to throw the challenge to get rid of Burton. Burton and Rupert both sit out a very physical immunity challenge, Burton unknowingly signing his own death warrant by doing so. After they lose the challenge, everyone except Michelle votes for Burton, and he gets sent to the Outcast tribe, where he'll get to spend a whole lot of time with his new BFF, Lil. Wait, uh, Rupe, you got any of that killing me you mentioned earlier? I'll kill you! At number two is Drew insisting Hunapu throw the episode four immunity challenge to eliminate Kelly Wentworth in Survivor San Juan del Sur, only for it to backfire on him in glorious, glorious fashion. Did I mention it was glorious? Now, allow me to begin with a full-throated defense of Drew Christie. At the time, Drew's insistence that under-edited Kelly was the biggest threat in the game, so much so that it was worth losing a challenge to eliminate her, was laughable. Try and take yourself back to the fall of 2014. You're excited that iTunes just generously added the new U2 album to your library with no way to remove it. You're still reeling from the incredibly satisfying payoff of the How I Met Your Mother finale earlier in the year, and you have no idea who Kelly Wentworth is. Kelly had barely even appeared on screen by this point, so Drew's insistence that she was some sort of master manipulator, like some sort of parvati come lately, was truly confusing to those of us watching at home. It's made all the more absurd by the fact that this tribe started with more men than women, so her all-women's alliance would need at least one male defector to even be a thing. And yet I hope we can agree that time has shown that Drew was downright prescient in his fear of Kelly's social and strategic skills. Basically, I'm a badass and a manipulator of this game. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd go that far, but uh, sure. Drew intentionally puts himself in the clutch position at the immunity challenge so he alone can ensure they lose, and he barely even tries to act convincingly as he half-heartedly tosses these rings like he's at some sort of depression-themed carnival. Challenge lost, all Drew has to do now is get the four other men on his side, except these guys could not be less organized. While Drew sticks to the plan and votes for Kelly, Keith and Reed vote for Julie, John votes for Keith, and Jeremy actually joins the women and votes for Drew, concluding 42 straight minutes of Drew dunking by Survivor with a Drew blindside. But with the benefit of hindsight, it's actually incredibly apparent that Drew was actually kinda sorta onto something here. Trust me, count on it. 
the most notable challenge throw and backfire in Survivor history is Zapatera throwing the Episode 3 immunity challenge to eliminate Russell in Survivor Redemption Island, only for their alliance to enter the merge one member short, where they suffered a pagonging at the hands of Boston Rob. Okay, so due to his back-to-back -back Day 39 games and insanely clutch idol plays, Russell seemed genuinely uneliminatable. So when he was on the cast for Redemption Island, I was like, yay, another full season of Russell. Again. But Russell's tribe Zapatera, a tribe that seems more at home on season 2 than season 22, sought to do the impossible. Vote Russell out. Russell was tempted into all of his old traps on Zapatera, but this time his tribe mates were always one step ahead, finding idols before he could and icing out the younger women the second Russell aligned with them. Zapatera had a tough call to make. The longer Russell stayed in the game, the likelier he was to get a foothold, and history's shown that is all Russell's game needs to snowball. Hanses are also notoriously not great for tribal morale. Knowing he has no idols and no options, they made the decision to throw the immunity challenge and vote him out. Russell's allies Krista and Stephanie followed him out the door. But when the Zapatera 6 lost the final pre-merge immunity, they had to take out one of their own, making the so misguided and so rude decision to vote off Sarita. Had they not thrown the challenge in episode 3, they probably enter the merge 6 strong, against 5 Ometepe and Matt returning from Redemption Island, giving them way more leverage for getting Matt on side. Instead, Ometepe entered the merge with an unshakable 6 and sent Zapatera out the door one by one. Naturally, hindsight is 2020, and there's no telling what sort of damage Russell might have caused to this tribe if he'd stayed in the game even 3 days longer. But the Zapatera alliance was solid and they had the idol, so he probably would have continued to be a sitting duck. It's likely that if Zapatera enters the merge with even one more number, we'd have, like, Survivor winner David Murphy gloating at the reunion about how he emulated Boston Rob's masterful gameplay in order to win, before emulating Boston Rob in another way. You guys are really afraid I'm gonna play the clip, aren't you? I wouldn't do that. You drive me nuts, but at the end of the day, you've made me happier than I could ever ask to be. So will you marry me, please? Shut the flipping front door. <laughs> Survivor loves blindsiding me. Got nothing else for you. Next week, we'll be looking at five challenge throws that actually paid off for the challenge throwers. So make sure to check that out. Until next time, don't get idled out.